In this video, we'll be looking at how we can replace one part of a string with another. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk. So we've got a string here. Hello there, Philip. Now suppose I wanted to change that to hello there, John. I can do that very easily, but there are more complicated ways. We've seen in a previous video how we can use substring to extract everything apart from my name, and then we can put in my name. But if I use the replace function, so I need to, to have my initial string to start with, I need to find something, and I need something to replace it with. So there we've got my replace function. So if I play that, then we get hello there, John. Now this is quite often used when you have a placeholder, say the hash or pound sign. So I can say replace the hash with John. So suppose this was a huge number of rows and I've got lots of people's names. I can say hello there Margaret, hello there Mildred and the rest of it. Right, so let's see what else we can do. Well, let's say I wanted to get rid of the capital H and replace it with a capital J. Well, this seems to be the formula. Let's have a look. But unfortunately, you can see that it has replaced not just the capital H's, but the lowercase ones as well. So if you want just the capital ones replaced, we need to use some collation. Now the collation on your database may be different to mine, but on mine, it is case insensitive. In other words, the functions that we're using, they don't care about whether it's a capital or not. So I'm going to change the collation for this one particular function with the collate. So I'm going to change the collation from case insensitive, which is what mine currently is, so CI, case insensitive, to case sensitive, CS. And there you can see now it's only gone and looked at the capital letter H and replaced that. The A, by the way, stands for accent. So if, for instance, I have another string and I have a phrase in Spanish, aquí está. Then what we can do is we can replace, for instance, the letter I. So if I look for the I and replace it with, say, a U, let's see what happens. Absolutely nothing, because the computer is not equating the I with an I and an accent. However, if we use the collation and change this so that this is accent insensitive, then you can see it has changed it. So let's go back to our example without any collation. And let's say I didn't know exactly what I'm replacing, but I want to replace the first five characters. Again, we can use substring, to have everything from character position 6 onwards. But there is an alternate way, and that is by using stuff. So stuff takes a starting position and number of characters. So here, it's very much so far like substring. So it's taken the first five characters, starting from position number 1, five characters. If I said 10, it would start from position number 10. However, stuff continues. It's going to remove what I've just said. So you've seen in the substring what it was, hello, and replace it with, and it doesn't need to be of the same length. So I'm going to replace it with hi. And so there we've replaced hello with hi. Now, just a couple of words. First of all, suppose I didn't want to replace it with anything. Well, I could replace it with null. So that just deletes it. Secondly, I could use a zero length. So that doesn't delete anything. Instead, that inserts only. So here we have hello there and welcome, Philip. And finally, if we choose something that's out of bounds, like for instance, position 32, not going to happen in a varchar 20, then we get a null at the end. So it doesn't just come back unedited and it doesn't try to put it 
right at the end, it comes back saying, I have no idea what's going along. So let's just give you nothing, no. So that's stuff. And then finally, what if I want to replace one character with another? So I have here a number in a non-English locale, which uses a dot instead of a comma for the thousand separator. So this is $1,234. So what I could do is I could replace this. So I could say I want this to be replaced with a comma. And that would do it absolutely fine. However, what if it continues and I say and 56 cents? Okay, so I'm going to replace the dots with a comma. Okay, so that gets me one comma, two, three, four, comma, five, six. And now I want to replace the commas with a dot. And now I have one dot, two, three, four, dot, five, six. So this reminds me of something, I think it was in the 1970s, when they're demonstrating their new word processor and they replaced all the letter O's with a letter P and then they replaced all the letter P's with a letter O just to demonstrate it. Unfortunately, that replaced all of the P's that were character P's at the beginning. This is not going to be that helpful. So what I need to do instead is do both at the same time. I need to replace the dot with a comma and the comma with a dot and not have it interact with each other. And we can do that using translate. So translate, despite its name, doesn't translate from one language to another. So you can't feed in something in English and get something out in Spanish. Instead, it does exactly what we've just seen in reply. However, it can allow for more than one character to be looked at at the same time. So now it's going to look for a dot and replace it with commas. It's going to look for commas and replace it with dots in the original text. So here you can see that the answer is one comma, two, three, four, dot, five, six, and it's not interacting with each other badly. So if you've got to have simultaneous replace, then I'll use translate. So in this video, we've had a look at three different formulas. First of all, we've had a look at replace. So replace is just replacing one part of a string with another. And then we've had a look at stuff. And stuff says, okay, this very specific part from this position for this many characters replace with something else. And you can use zero characters if you want to add, and you can use a null if you just want to delete. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button. And why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.